Hi, my name is Mr. Exum and welcome to my EdTech channel where I show you how to get the most out of technology in the classroom. So you've set up a class on Teams, but what's the best way to organize and share files? Well, this video shows you all the different ways to do this and also gives you some great tips and tricks. So let's get started. Okay, so you've got your class and you want to add some files to it. Now there's various different ways you can do this. To start with, let's look at how you'd upload something as a read-only document as, as part of the class materials. So when you start a class, you do have a nice link to be able to do this straight away right here. I'm going to click on that and it takes me to my files tab and it takes me to that area where I've got this class materials folder. I'm going to click onto that because this means it will be read only. Okay, so let's say I'm going to upload something onto there. Okay, I've got a couple of options. I can drag and drop. If I've got a window here, for example, I could just drag it on. That's a nice quick way of doing it. Okay, I can also add a file by clicking upload and files and browsing to it on my computer or my OneDrive. There we go. So I've added some files up there, but that's, you know, how do the pupils know that I've added that information? Well, if I go back to posts, okay, and I, I want to start a little conversation down here, I can say, hi, and I can at the team, just by typing at, and then start typing in the name of the team. Here's the team, and that means they'll all get a notification. Here is the syllabus for this course. And I can use the attachment button here and I can browse teams and channels and this will allow me to search anywhere on any of my teams or channels to find files that I've added. So I go to my class materials file folder, there's that uh, document that I added earlier and I can then share a link to that there and then I can click the post and there it is. Okay. Uh, they have that file, it's a nice sort of shortcut to it there, but it will always remain in that files area uh, under that class materials section, okay? And if they click on it, the great thing about Teams is it just opens up within Teams and every file you can have a chat about, if they want to make a comment on it, then they can make a comment and it will sort of uh, tag it to that file almost. Okay, so that's one way of adding a file straight into there. You can skip out that middle bit and just if you just want to quickly add a file in, I can just use this down here and you can see again I've got recent documents. So actually I just want to chuck in uh, this document here, upload a copy. Okay, it will say where do you want to upload it to. I can then choose that class materials section if I want. If I just choose this area here, not inside the classroom. You see the class materials has got a little uh, padlock on it because that's read only. But if I just choose that area there and upload a copy of this uh, PowerPoint into there and post that, then that PowerPoint, because it's not in that lockdown area, it is editable by the students. It's a shared document. Everything by default is in a SharePoint area. So they can have a look at it here, but they can also uh, click and edit it just as I can here. I'll show you that from a student's perspective in a minute. Again, the nice thing is you don't need to launch PowerPoint. Everything opens up within Teams. They don't need to leave the whole Teams platform for this. Okay, so that has added a file and it's put it in the files area and it's put it here. Let me show you this from a student perspective. So this we're now signed in as that student. You see they've got a little notification on their team there to say that there's some activity. There'll also be a little notification in their activity tab, which will tell them what's gone on. Uh, because I tagged them in that, they'll get a notification on their phone as well. So they'll be able to see these documents. Like I said, they'll be able to click on this one, uh, but they will not be able to edit it. Okay, so they can have a look at that. Uh, and they can click on their files tab and they will see their class materials area and they'll see that I uploaded uh, that other document there. And like I said, if they click on this one, it will open up in Teams and they will be able to edit it or and, and make changes. All right, then I will see that in my teacher version. So if I go back to my teach version and click on files, you'll see that it was edited by stud test four a few seconds ago. So I know that they've edited that. Now, you know, maybe they've messed around and changed something and that's not good. Don't worry, you can always 
roll a document back to an earlier version and you can see any changes that have been made it will save the last 500 edits in the version history how do i get to the version history and do that well i can click on that and click open in sharepoint it'll take me to the sharepoint site where this is saved i can then click on it again and get the version history okay and it tells me that it was first done there version one was by me and version two was changed at that time by stud test four if I want to open up that original version, I can do that in PowerPoint and I can get that original file back. Now let's say I create a new channel, okay, for my topic. All right. And I want to add some files to here. Now you'll notice that in here in files, there isn't one of these class materials um, locked down folders. You only get that by default in the general tab but it's quite helpful to have one if you're creating a new topic and you really want to have documents that are just read only by default. Now it's quite easy to do this you can just click um, new uh, folder okay and all I've got to do then is go into the uh, open it in SharePoint and go further into the settings by clicking here clicking manage access okay and you'll see that members at the moment can edit okay and what I've got to do is change that to can view okay and when I go back to the team those permissions will have been updated so if I add a PowerPoint to here and then I'm going to post about it in the channel and I go to the student view it's gone bold because that means there's been a change to that area so they know something's been added something's happened okay now they can click on that but it says read only okay they do not have permission to edit this file they can download a copy of it if they want to okay so they can keep a copy of it by clicking at the top there and doing download but they can't edit this original version so it's a nice way of, of having a bit more control there over your files okay now sometimes you can get a bit lost all the files are being added to teams that you're a member of and files that you've added now on your area down the left hand side on, on the tab here if you click on files you can easily search and find any files you can see where they've been added to you can even browse your OneDrive from here so there's a central place to locate and work on any files that you've got okay the great thing about these files is that once they're in here again you can just open them up and make changes straight within teams okay you can do all your work within teams itself and it's the same for the students okay uh, they may be looking for files again they've got a files tab down the left when they click on that They'll be able to see all their files that are stored in Teams, or they'll also be able to access their files from OneDrive and again work on them there. My final bit of advice for using files within Teams is how to make new files straight within a team. Okay, if you're in your files section and you click new up here, then you've got some options. Let's say I'm doing an experiment. Okay, I'm going to create a new Excel workbook. Okay, and this is a workbook for some class data, so we're going to share our results. Okay, so I've made a quick table and I'm going to explain to students that I want them to add their name and then their 10 readings and an average okay, into this sheet. So there it is, I've made that file, I can click close, okay, I can go back to the, uh, the channel and post about it. Remember to add the team so they get a notification. Now, the great thing about that is I've created a file straight within the team, it's stored in there, and it's already shared and editable by all of them at the same time. So they can all be uh, editing that uh, at the same time. And look, they've got a notification now saying that they've got this new file. All right, they'll be able to open it as well. So we've both got to open it at the same time. It says that they're editing, and it also says up here HE, because I've also got the workbook open, okay? So we can have all the students editing this collaborative file. So it shows how amazing it is to be able to quickly create a file, collaborate, get some data here, and have it stored within the team. 
Okay, time for one last tip. If you've got a key document that you want to actually form its own tab at the top so it's easily accessible at all times, you click on the little dots and you can actually make that document a tab. There it is. It's now got its own tab at the top. So there you go, hopefully that has given you all you need to know about adding files to Teams. I have made other videos for Teams covering assignments, meetings, class notebooks, so be sure to check them out on my channel. For now though, I hope that was useful and thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon. See you next time.